My name is Rachel and you're watching The Sailing Siren. If you watched my last video, I told you about my experience with my first freediving blackout during a static training session. It happened because I didn't know my limits, I progressed too quickly, and I didn't know how the signs of hypoxia manifested in me. It's one thing when you learn about the signs of low oxygen in a freediving course, but a little bit different when you experience or witness it firsthand. If you want to hear about what my experience with my first blackout was like, feel free to click on this video. In this video, however, I take you through one of my max static breath holds from start to finish so you can see some of the things that I monitor in order to keep track of my training sessions. You'll get to see what contractions look like in me, and I'll also point out any other sensations that I keep track of during my training logs. Okay, here we go. When I'm doing my relaxation breathing before a breath hold, I make sure that it's tidal breathing, which is essentially the relaxed breathing that you do while watching a movie or during shavasana at the end of a yoga session. My breathe up is two full breaths, and my final breath is one full inhale that fills both my belly and my chest. If you've been watching my pulse oximeter, my base resting heart rate during this phase of the breath hold has ranged from 68 to 76 beats per minute, and my oxygen saturation has ranged from 98 to 100 percent. A normal resting heart rate ranges from 60 to 100 beats per minute, and a normal resting oxygen saturation is between 95 and 100 percent. Just for your reference, I've included a chime sound at each minute mark so you know where I am in the breath hold. The first phase of a breath hold before the urge to breathe kicks in is fairly comfortable, and it's my goal to prolong this phase as much as possible. I do this by visualizing myself in calming scenarios like a sunset on a beach or by doing body scans and relaxing parts of my body bit by bit. The body scans are useful for identifying areas that I unconsciously tense up, and any muscle that is tense is using oxygen. I've been keeping track of when I have my first contractions in my dive log for the past few months. They normally begin around 1 minute and 30 seconds during a dry breath hold, and around 1 minute and 45 seconds when I'm doing a static breath hold in a pool. Some factors that I've noticed that affect when I get my first contraction are stress, being cold, thinking too much about contractions, and being tired after several days of training in a row. For those who don't know what a contraction is, it is your body's response to a buildup of carbon dioxide in the body. Your diaphragm begins to involuntarily contract in order to try and pull fresh air into your lungs. My sign for my first contraction will be me lifting my left pointer finger. I start getting baby contractions around 1 minute and 20 seconds, but you'll see the first prolonged contraction in my diaphragm at 1 minute and 29 seconds. At this point, my oxygen saturation is still within a normal range, and my heart rate has dropped to 64 beats per minute. The first minute of contractions is usually the most mentally challenging part. My methods for coping with this phase of the breath hold are to count my heartbeats, and if I can't hear my heartbeats, I count my contractions. As I'm not looking at my breath hold time, I use the only other outside stimulus that I can sense. Can I hold my breath for 10 more heartbeats? Yes, I can. How about 10 more heartbeats? Okay, I can do that. Eventually, I lose track of the number of sets I've held my breath for, and the breath hold becomes less and less challenging. My heart rate has slowly started to drop starting a few seconds into my breath hold. At some point during the first minute of contractions, it's interesting to note that I can hear an audible decrease in the frequency of my heartbeats, and it's reassuring to know that my mammalian dive reflex is kicking in. At 2 minutes and 35 seconds, I notice a tingling in my face, but my oxygen saturation is still around 95%. It isn't very apparent in this video as I wasn't shooting for a personal best, but my contractions usually become more frequent and start moving from my diaphragm and up into my chest. At the end of a max breath hold around 4 minutes and 45 seconds, my contractions become more noticeable in my throat and almost feel like hiccups. From my experience with my first blackout, I've learned not to push the breath hold much further as hiccup-like contractions were some of my last memories before blacking out. I've also learned from other instructors to watch for contractions moving up through the body and tension in the shoulders and neck as well as blue in the nail beds or behind the ears of your dive buddy if he or she isn't wearing a hood. At the later stages of a breath hold, a safety should be doing safety checks very frequently as it can take less than 10 seconds for a diver to go from conscious to not being able to make the decision to end the dive. If you've still been watching the pulse oximeter, you'll notice that my heart rate towards the end of my breath hold dropped to 41 beats per minute at 3 minutes and 15 seconds and ranges from 43 to 46 beats per minute at its lowest.
I'm raising the pointer finger on my right hand to see if there are any noticeable signs of shaking in my finger or hand. Shaking is a sign of a loss of motor control or LMC, and fortunately, I'm LMC free. I'll be ending my breath hold soon at four minutes and five seconds, and you'll notice the color come back into my lips as I perform my recovery breaths. The slight color change is because oxygen poor blood is blue in color, and as I do my recovery breaths, the blood gets oxygenated again and turns more of a red color. My recovery breath is a full inhale, held for two to three seconds, exhaled, and then repeated for at least 30 seconds. Your oxygen levels are still dropping as it can take up to 30 seconds for your oxygen levels to begin rising again after you begin your recovery breaths. This is why it's so important to continue recovery breaths for at least 30 seconds. If you're paying attention to my pulse oximeter, you'll notice that it took 20 seconds after I began my recovery breaths for my oxygen saturation to drop to its lowest number of 67%, and then another 15 seconds for it to go back up to 100%. It's also important to remember that there is a lot of variability in physiology from person to person, and what happens in my body is probably going to be a bit different than what happens in yours. You're your own science experiment, and it's important for you to know how your body works and what your sensations are telling you. If you like this video, please give it a thumbs up and let me know what you thought about it in the comments below. Stay tuned because next week I'll share what it was like to go through my first freediving competition. Okay, thank you so much for watching and I'll see you next week. Bye!